What is up guys, welcome to Wrestle Nun, and I'm back here again for another video. Sorry, I just dropped the camera there. Uh, this is going to be a Bound for Glory 2012 review. Of course, this pay-per-view was last night, and it was... You know, I'll save that for a minute. Real quick, I just want to give a shout-out to CM Punk, uh, BITW1514. Uh, he was the guy that I said my cerebral CZW review... Uh, that I talked to online for like a minute or so. So, uh, go check him out. Um, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Just had some, uh, epic Dr. Pepper. And I'm still drinking it now. So, again, that's CM Punk, B-I-T-W-1514. Alright, so now it's time. Sorry, this camera is really, like... I, I, I keep dropping it, I'm sorry. So, now... For the Bound for Glory review. Now, overall, I thought this show was a very good show. Uh, I honestly thought Slammiversary might have been a little bit better. But, you know, this is just the third, uh, great pay probably the second best TNA pay-per-view of the year. And then Destination X will follow. Slammiversary obviously being number one. So, without further ado, let's get to the review. And, by the way, uh, the match-by-match -match ratings will be in the description box as they are for, uh, some of the WWE ones that I do, and, uh, CCW. And, alright. I'm trying to reposition this here. Gonna move back. Alright. That's, that's good enough. Alright, so we have, uh, Rob Van Dam versus Zima Ion for the X Division title, kicking off Bound for Glory. I honestly thought this was a pretty good match. Uh, I was I got everything I expected out of it. There was some, uh, how trademark 69 likes to say it, some clunky parts in the match, I think that's how he says it. But, um, I still thought it was a very good match overall. RVD won, as I predicted, and, you know, I, le I know some people are have a problem with this, like, oh, there's no point uh, of giving the belt to RVD, and they're just doing it so uh, they have something to do with them or whatever, I don't know. But, uh, honestly, I, I'm, I'm glad that RVD won the belt because, I don't know, I picked him to win, and because I don't like Zima Ion, really. Well, his character, I don't like, he's pretty good in the ring. And I'm just a, an RVD guy. I'm a Paul Heyman guy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so RVD won the Zima Ion. Good stuff there. Next, you have Samoa Joe versus Magnus for the television championship. Another good match. A little bit better than RVD and Magnus. And, by the way, the crowd all night long, I think, was into the uh, the show. They're really into this match. Uh, Samoa Joe won. He uh, beat Magnus with, uh, uh, how do you say it? Uh, I'm just gonna say the task mission. Basically, I don't think he had the leg hooked, but he had the neck hooked, like the choke hold or whatever. But whatever, Samojo beat Magnus, and what was a good match. Next, you have Bobby Roode versus James Storm with King Mo as a special enforcer. Street fight this was, and wow, that's all I can say. Match of the night, possibly, maybe right behind Bobby Roode and. Austin Aries from Destination X, possibly match of the year for TNA. One or two, I, you can argue with that. Great, awesome match. Match of the night, almost probably match of the year for TNA. There's just so many spots in this match. Very brutal match, and big props to both guys for putting on such a great match. Match of the night, and I cannot say that enough. This was just awesome. Twitter, everybody on Twitter was going crazy about it. And... <clears throat> Yeah, so, great, great match, very awesome match. I'm glad King Mo wasn't involved in the finish or wasn't put in the, the match as, like, wasn't booked in the match so much. You know, they had uh, both Rude and Storm have a little face over them at ringside, and that was about it. And, but, yeah, it's just awesome stuff. They used, to, I, uh, they used tacks and chairs and trash cans, kendo sticks. I think they only used one, but whatever. Just great, great match, match of the night. One or two on the list for TNA match of the year. Uh, next, you had Joey Ryan versus Al Snow. With uh, Joey Ryan won, he got a contract. Uh, Joey Ryan won because Matt Morgan uh, came through the crowd and clotheslined Al Snow. Uh, I can care less about Matt Morgan. I'm just glad Joey Ryan got a contract. I'm looking forward to seeing him in TNA, and hopefully he can get a program with RVD for the extra title. Uh, next, you have Samoa Joe, not Samoa Joe, uh, my apologies, Kurt Angle, AJ Styles versus Samoa, no, God, I keep saying Samoa Joe, Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez versus Kaz and Daniels, 
I can't get my words out like usual. For the tag team titles, this was a, a pretty good match. Uh, There's some spots in this. All teams worked well, I think. And uh, I'm going to, and Chavo and Hernandez won. I'm going to agree with Trademark 629 on this one. You know, they really just put the belts on them, in my opinion, to uh, end the rivalry finally between Angle and AJ versus Daniels and Kaz. And the end of the rivalry between AJ and Daniels, they've been going all year pretty much. And pretty much since last June, July, even. So, what? I, I'm glad that, you know, the feud is finally going to be over now. Good tag team match here. I can care less really about Chavo and Hernandez winning. Oh, I'm with Stevie Breach on this one. I'm just waiting for them to break up. And, uh, yeah, so Chavo and Hernandez won a good match. Uh, next, you have Miss Testmacher versus Tara for the knockouts title. Uh, whatever, you know, one out of five match. I can care less about this. Boring, you know, like usual. And, uh, yeah, so Tara won and brought out her Hollywood boyfriend, which was Jesse of Big Brother. I don't know, that's how it's listed on TNA.com. But, uh, I don't even know who he is. Sorry if I'm offending anybody by that, but I don't know who he is, and I can care less, so, yeah. <sighs> Man, after the, oh boy, here we go. After this, the Aces and Eights versus Sting and Bully Ray. Just want to point out, Bully Ray had the old school Sting face, uh, face paint on, marked out for that. That was awesome. You know, I didn't live that era. I wasn't even alive, so you know, I just kind of said that I didn't live that era. I didn't watch anything, since, you know, in that era, my entire life of being a wrestling fan but i know i know what sting used to wear on his face you know the old i've seen pictures and whatnot and bully ray looked very cool with it i thought it was awesome and then you know this match you know it started it was pretty good good 10 minutes uh of just brawling really nothing special they brought in a table which bully ray went through because a masked man of the aces names came through the crowd and slammed bully ray through the table now, uh, <sighs> Aces Nate's won. Okay, don't care. So, I believe St Hulk, Hulk Hogan comes down because they're beating up on Sting, I think. And then he starts laying out all the members of the Aces Nate's, basically just making him look like he's better than all these guys who have been destroying, you know, your entire roster. But whatever, Hogan's Hogan. I don't, I don't know what to say about that. Who cares? Uh, so, and it comes down to him. I think him, Sting in the ring holding the guy who put Bully Ray through a table and takes the mask off and it's Devon. Like okay. It's Devon it's <laughs> who cares, you know? Like I, I honestly thought it would have been a good idea to bring Abyss as, you know, because what other they needed somebody good. Somebody logical. I don't know. You know why not put Abyss as the leader of Aces and Eights. You can put something like that, but uh you know and I honestly thought they could have. I honestly thought that was gonna happen too because Joseph Parks, which is Abyss, you know, you know he fought one of the members of Ace and Nate to the back, and they could have just had him come out after that because you know just throw the throw the mask on the stuff and whatnot, and when he's in the back, but he didn't. Abyss, no should. Devon is behind Ace and Nate's. You know what? I could ramble on for ten minutes about this, but honestly, I'm gonna say I'm just gonna keep it short and sweet. Devon's not gonna put. Butts in the seats, as Stevie Breach said, and uh, I think it's stupid. And I don't care about Devon, and I I care less. No, nothing, nothing good is gonna come out of this, in my opinion. But bog with my mind. Next, you have Jeff Hardy versus Austin Aries for the TNA World Title. Uh, second best match of the night. I was honestly hoping Austin Aries would win this, but uh, going into the show, before the show, actually. Austin Aries came out on the pre-show or whatever and uh, cut a promo, like a heelish promo. So now I'm thinking, all right. So Austin Aries is uh, uh, turning. Jeff Hardy's going to win. Jeff Hardy is going to win the TNA title. What happens later, Austin Aries cuts another promo in the back, an interview. Another kind of heelish promo. And I'm still thinking, all right, Jeff Hardy's got this. And then the match starts and I'm like, you know what? I think it's kind of even right now. I, I think, you know, even though Austin Aries is having this heelish thing, I actually think it's 50-50. And I think it, it, in the crowd's opinion, I guess it wasn't 50-50 because it was all, all Austin Aries, you know, cheers in that match. And Jeff Hardy was getting booed. 
But uh, I don't know. I was just really hoping that Jeff didn't win the belt, but he did, and I'm not gonna complain. You know, I can I can uh, live with it. But honestly, I would have put Austin Aries beating Jeff Hardy. But a great match though. Jeff Hardy is your new TNA World Champion. Uh, enough said. So that is your TNA Bound for Glory uh, pay per view review. Sorry about the crappy cameraing in this mat uh, in this match. Sorry in this video. Um. Hey, it's my room's a mess right now, and there's not any room for me to stand or sit and just set the camera on the shelf or something, but, yeah, so I'm gonna upload this video and then clean out this, uh, dirt hole. Whatever. So, uh, let's end wrestling on 9. Peace.